So we've been getting a lot of questions related to what's going on up in Buffalo, what's going on with Jack Eichel, famous uh, all-star player up for the Buffalo Sabres, uh, talking to a lot of other spine surgeons uh, in, in what has become a really kind of interesting uh, debate uh, in terms of the best way to treat uh, his disc herniation in his neck and what, what type of surgery would be best. Uh, and, and when I think about this, I, th I think it's very interesting to think about People love to follow all-star athletes and, and talk about what surgery Tiger Woods may have had, but also um, really how that uh, discussion changes and how it's a little bit different when we're dealing with somebody who, who maybe isn't uh, an all-star uh, athlete in, in a contact sport. And so if you look at uh, the exact specifics, and we're, we're not going to obviously get into anything um, private or privileged, but if you look at what's well known out there is that uh, uh, Jack is uh, the was the captain of the Buffalo Sabres and uh, an, an MVP type all-star uh, hockey player uh, and uh, had an injury uh, getting slammed into the boards and developed symptoms of a disc herniation in the neck which uh, can involve pain in the neck, pinched nerve down the arms. Uh, and, and while most people uh, over time who have this type of injury really can get better with, with therapy and time and non-operative treatment, unfortunately uh, he hasn't. And so the discussion has moved toward uh, a surgery. Uh, and there's been now a bit of a disconnect uh, between um, uh, Jack, the, the player, the patient, and um, uh, in some ways perhaps the doctors and certainly uh, the, the team, uh, the Buffalo Sabres and, and people in the NHL. And so the debate is between do two different surgeries for a disc herniation in the neck. Uh, one, the recommended surgery being an anterior cervical decompression infusion, which is called an anterior cervical fusion done through a small incision in the front of the neck where the surgeon uses a microscope to remove the disc, uh, unpinching the nerve, and then actually placing a, a cage and a plate with bone graft. And ultimately, this fuses the bones together. So it eliminates the motion of that one specific disc in the neck. Uh, and the, the treatment uh, that, that Mr. Eichel's requesting, which is an anterior cervical arthroplasty or disc replacement, which is done through a very similar incision, but in, uh, once the disc is removed and the nerve is unpinched, a device is put in that is a replacement that preserves uh, motion. And so the potential benefit of a disc replacement surgery for a patient is it preserves motion so it doesn't stiffen the neck. Uh, and by preserving that motion down the road, uh, perhaps a lower risk of trouble of the other discs. Whereas if a fusion is performed, its neighbor discs may work over, uh, over time and actually have a higher risk of going on to degenerate and have problems of their own uh, down the road. And so you can see how uh, inherently we'd, we'd like to preserve motion whenever it's the right thing to do. And you can see how uh, a patient would really potentially want that, especially uh, a pro uh, athlete, a performance athlete. Without getting into his specifics, it is, is it important to say that there are certain features about a, a neck problem or a disc herniation where there's clearly uh, a situation where some people need fusion. Uh, and there are times when discs are simply too far gone to be considered for a disc replacement. There are situations where the spinal cord itself is being pinched in, in a more concerning or perhaps dangerous way. So there are times when whether you want a disc replacement or not, a fusion is truly, truly the right option. Uh, now for most patients where both are a really reasonable option, uh, I tend to really favor disc replacements whenever I can because uh, I like to preserve the motion in people's necks and I do believe this leads to lower risk uh, of other problems or better spine health down the road. And so I wouldn't want people to think, oh, the, the NHL is really pushing this player to get a fusion. That must be because fusions uh, are better because in, in general, I, I'm not sure I would uh, agree with that statement for most people. What's unique about this situation uh, is that we're dealing with somebody who's going to be uh, essentially in uh, car accident type of collisions all the time and the question about how strong that person's going to be down the road. Now, with either surgery, we're dealing with a situation where uh, bones are contoured and a, a cage or a disc replacement is put in and the bones have to literally grow into the cage or the disc replacement. So immediately after, after either surgery, there's a period of time where a patient really needs to take it easy and avoid contact or, or, or heavy type of activities to make sure that there's no loosening between the bone and the implant. And that's, that's really the same for both procedures. 
once the bone has had time to heal solid, then that's when we typically uh, tell people that they can do whatever they want. And, and many times that's a progression where you really need to be careful for the first six weeks after surgery and perhaps even avoiding some things as far as three months, depending on the patient. What's unique uh, in, in terms of thinking about somebody who's playing for the NFL or, or perhaps you know football, rugby, uh, is the type of collisions that are, are taking place on a regular basis. Once a fusion is performed, two bones are welded together, and as long as that fusion welds, that area has no motion, it's extremely strong, essentially as strong as any other bone in your body. So the risk of something bad happening down the road to that fusion should be very minimal, even in a, a contact athlete. A disc replacement, uh, and there are multiple different models, but essentially we're dealing with a device that has different components. So for example, metal, metal, and plastic in between. And there are different ways that these implants can be made, but there's movement there. And that movement is, is the whole purpose. It's, it's good for most people. But the question is, is there a potential for some kind of failure of that implant if some kind of major trauma were to take place? Now, the reality is with many, many people having had disc replacements around the world, uh, luckily we're seeing the rate of these kind of you know, major failures to be uh, incredibly low. And so uh, in some ways, this is something that is uh, hopefully more of a, a worry than, than an actual a problem that we're going to be dealing with. But certainly, uh, if you look at uh, the surgeons who are dealing with this and trying to give the patient information, and if you look at the team and NFL franchises or, or NHL franchises, uh, certainly a franchise player, you want to make sure that once that person returns to play, they're going to keep playing. And, and obviously, there's a lot at stake. There's a lot of money involved in these situations. And so um, what it seems like is that the, uh, the, the hockey team and those doctors have really been insisting on a fusion because they feel that there's a lower risk of some kind of catastrophic horrible thing where the implant literally breaks down the road whereas you know uh, the patient in this situation a player who's under contract really is interested more in preserving the motion and the health of the neck down the road and this is unfortunately in this situation it's really turned into a big debate a lot of conflict to the point where uh, not only is it delayed getting him healed most importantly and on the road to recovery but it's really had effect in terms of the relationship with the captain of the team and and perhaps looking at trades and and how this may affect other teams um, um, who may be willing to uh, take this risk for him down the road there are many 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 athletes who have had disc replacements including you know very high level contact athletes boxing mixed martial arts people who really uh, have uh, to put their neck through some very, very serious and strenuous situations. And, and many of us uh, as surgeons, when working with the patient, have felt comfortable with this. And I, I personally have done disc replacements in very, very high level fighters and boxers and, and have felt very comfortable uh, in this situation. Once the implant is healed, it's very, very, very strong. And so if you look at where we're at right now, the debate kind of rages on about what, what is best for, uh, for Jack, what is best for the team, how are they going to work this out together. Um, but what's, what's interesting is a lot of stories about celebrities, particularly athletes, and their spine problems then drive patients to want to seek that same type of treatment. Oh, I, I want, I, you know, I saw what happened with Peyton Manning. I saw what happened with Tiger. I want what Tiger had. And in this situation, it's really important to understand this is very, very unique and what, uh, what the doctors and the teams are actually pushing him to have may actually not really be the best treatment, particularly for someone who, who is uh, living more of a, a normal life or a, a lower risk life in terms of contact sports and things. So um, I do think that they're, they're gonna come to a resolution. I'm really optimistic that, uh, that Jack will get fixed one way or another and we'll, we'll get back and he's young and obviously very talented with a lot of years left in front of him. Um, but it's very, very interesting to see that how this is all developed. And in talking to a number of surgeons and, and some other surgeons who take care of some pro teams and even in, in the NHL, um, I do think that the, the traditional teaching has always been to really just force fusions in these type of elite athletes. And I can tell you the underlying current and the discussions I'm having now is really starting to move away as we get more experience with these, these uh, implants. And I do think that while there are contracts and, and, and surgeons and, and business people involved, um, 
we don't ever want to completely uh, eliminate the patient from having uh, a voice in terms of what they, they may or may not um, want for their own care moving forward. And certainly for pe people who are not under contract uh, with the uh, NHL, I think disc replacement is a really wonderful option. And if a surgery of the neck is in fact needed, it's certainly an option you want to understand and explore. Uh, and I really do think is the best option for lots of people.